Alright guys, you may not remember, but I made a video eight months ago talking about some of the things I'm quite worried about when it comes to the Refa Village King release. And today we're going to look back at that video and review whether they actually came true or not. Remember guys, this is just the opinions of some random nerd on the internet really isn't going to hurt anyone and you shouldn't take it too seriously. Many different MMO players have different opinions and that's what makes MMOs so interesting and fun to play, the diversity of different people that you end up playing the game with and having discussions with. By the way guys, I just recently made a cheeky gold making guide where you can make 500 gold per day very easily in a very short space of time by just doing very very simple auction house flips. Now if you want to check that out or if you do is subscribe to the channel and the video will be on my channel page. But anyway, let's move on. So my first concern in this video was gear score. And gear score, rather unfortunately, has returned with a vengeance. Or even at a point where the community is defending gear score, which I find genuinely confusing. But that really is just the community these days. I mean, they even defend bots and GDKPs. So you know. Gear score is just a plague that needs to be vaccinated out of the World of Warcraft population. It deters new players from gaining access to endgame content because if a pug is asking for a gear score requirement, I don't know why I said it in such a weird accent then, a gear score requirement only obtainable from doing the raid itself before you apply for the group, then how do you even get into the group? Now, this may not be so much the case right now, but I guarantee you it will get worse. Now, there's going to be one guy in the comment section about to say, uh, just join a guild. Yeah, but not everyone has the time to commit to a guild schedule and prefer to just play the game more casually, join a guild as a social, and then pug it now and again. Or join organised pugs and things like that when I can, but if all of these pugs are asking for a gear score requirement, then you're not going to be able to get into groups in the first place. Sometimes you do miss your guild raid night due to IRL reasons, and then you have to pug the raid instead, but you can't, because you don't have enough gear score. Because some absolute donkey is requiring you to have 4k gear score for a NAC 25 man run. And at the end of the day, if you really want to be careful on who you invite to a group, there's this website that has existed for many years called Warcraft Logs, and you can just inspect people. And everyone lies about their gear score anyway, like, how can you be absolutely sure when someone says their gear score is a certain amount that it actually is that amount? It's basically just the most pointless thing in World of Warcraft. If I wanted to make a Giga Chad group, I'd just be checking people in Warcraft logs and inspecting them to make sure they definitely have all the gear that is coming up on Warcraft logs. It's that simple. And then you can make the distinction that, hmm, yeah, this guy has worse gear than many other people in the raid, but he has much better logs, so he's probably going to pull his weight. And then you'd be able to make a group of actual good players, which are actually going to pull their weight and get the raid done, rather than just geared players. Because these days, people can just get geared by swiping their credit card and going to a GDKP. So you may think that, yeah, gear score is a good thing, because it means that you're always bringing geared people to a group, but it's probably going to end up a worse thing. Overall, it's a bad thing for people who are gearing up their alts, and very bad for new players, which is a very bad thing for Classic WoW, because we want a steady flow of new players throughout the expansion. And the community is literally discouraging people from playing the game. Now, this is a genuine community made issue blizzard isn't making this issue you could argue that they are by not having average item level in the game but you get my point next let's talk about wintergraph so when i wrote this script i think i laughed out loud for about 30 seconds long when i when i came to this section because wintergrasp is just such a joke og wintergrasp was a server pvp event a real mmo social feature in the game where the server actually had to bond together in order to unlock the VOA, in order to unlock boons and loot. It's great MMO design. But Blizzard didn't release it in its original state because then they would have to admit that they've done a real piss poor job at balancing servers for the past three years. If the servers were balanced, Wintergrass could have released properly in the way it was meant to be. I mean, the servers don't need to be balanced. They just have to have 
a healthy population on both factions. I used to play in a Wrath Lich King server back in the day with a horde dominant population, but we'd always lose Wintergrass because the alliance were just simply better. There was some proper faction rivalry in the game on that server, which is a great social element that every MMO should have, but with Wintergrass the way it is now, the opposite faction on your server it basically may as well be non-existent, they're totally invisible. Now all PvP is instance-based and cross-server. So the last time we ever got to see any interesting faction interactions was with Classic WoW and the world buff griefing chaos that ensued. Personally, I think it's a shame, but I do understand that a lot of people really just don't care about this stuff. Now, my third concern was that there'd be too many Death Knights. Now, this depends on who you ask, and it's also different server to server. Talk about my experience. So on my server, obviously I do play a Death Knight. It is basically impossible to get a VOA group as a DPS Death Knight. I can normally only get one as a tank. And the same usually goes for 10-man pugs. Yeah, there is a lot of Death Knights. In my guild, I think we have about six Death Knights. But then my friend's guild, who I sometimes pug with, they really struggle to get Death Knights. So most of the time when I join their raid group, I'm actually the only Death Knight. And I get a lot of messages in my, uh, you know, my Twitch chat saying, how on earth are you the only Death Knight in that raid group? Because that is a fairly rare sight. So it is a bit of an issue for a Death Knight to pick up a casual pug right now. But because you can very easily stack multiple Death Knights in your raid due to how powerful they are, it's not been that much of an issue for me when it, obviously in my guild. But I have been guildless for a while, so you guys tell me in the comment section, you know, if any guildless Death Knights out there, has it been hard for you to find a guild as a Death Knight? Fourth concern was Lagadan. A laggy, unplayable Dalaran where the game is just stuttering along like it has been on private servers because private servers aren't layered so you have thousands of people sitting around Dalaran. Well at first I thought Dalaran was laggy and I thought Blizzard had messed up but then I realised for some reason the add-on item rack and Questy were lagging my game a lot. And when I disabled that, yeah Dalaran is actually totally fine. Blizzard have actually leveled it pretty well, surprisingly. In fact, every time I get an invite when I'm chilling in Dalaran, I end up layer hopping, so there must be a lot of layers in Dalaran to prevent those lag issues. My fourth concern we can only talk about in a speculative manner because the thing I was concerned about is the long wait for Ordoir. I have no idea when Ordoir is going to turn up, but my prediction will be at least a month after Dragonblight which would be quite a long wait for Alderwire to turn up. Private servers normally get phase one done in about two months because the raids are very easy, we've already done them before in Classic, so it's nothing new. It's not enough to keep people invested and interested in the game. You know, people get burned out of phase one very, very quickly, and many people already are, let's be honest. But honestly, I think the bigger concern could be Dragonblight. I mean, it's early days and it's Blizzard we're talking about here, but it does look like a fairly good expansion and they've introduced a number of good features to encourage players to return to the game or to swap from Wrath Lich King Classic when they can't be bothered waiting for Ordoir to turn up. Like, for instance, the experience buff and character boosts and just giving everyone Shadowlands for free. And I think, didn't everyone get a... You probably have to correct me on this in the comment section. I'm pretty sure everyone got a character boost for free also. Or less, that is just Blizzard being nice to me, which it probably isn't. I mean, if you look at surveys done, at least a quarter of current Wrath Lich King players will go and play Dragonblight, but obviously whether they make it their main game instead of playing Wrath Lich King is debatable. I think a combined threat of Dragonblight and having to wait another two months, probably for Ordoir, could result in a bigger drop-off of players than we expected, but then again, you know, it is early days. Wrath Lich King Classic does have a strong player base, much larger than I actually thought it would be. Most people have raided in Wrath of Lich King, and they are thoroughly enjoying it, and you can see that by the numbers, because now there's more Warcraft logs for Phase 1 in Wrath of Lich King than there was in the most recent raid of Shadowlands. This doesn't mean that more people are playing Wrath Classic than Retail, because there's a lot of other stuff to do on Retail than doing raids, and anyway, it's impossible to get an accurate answer unless you literally work for Blizzard. But nonetheless, it is a big player base, and if you look at the success of Wrath Lich King Classic private servers, it very likely will maintain a strong player base for the whole expansion. Unless Dragonblight turns out to be the best thing since sliced bread, or Ashes of Creation actually comes out before 2036. 
both are very unlikely events, in my humble opinion. Before I finish, guys, be sure to check out my second channel. I have Oblivion mod lists over there, and I have a little video about how you can actually play Fable 2 on your PC. In the future, I'm going to make retrospective long review videos of some of my favourite games that are not related to World of Warcraft, so please subscribe if you're interested in that kind of thing. It really helps out, and I want to get to a 1,000 subs. Anyway, my name is Metagoblin. Until the next video, ciao. Thank you.